Hello again. Today we are going to take a look at San Esteban, a Fiesta Village Park in California. This is a gold winning park made by Fred on New Element. Uh, it's got a lot of great details and a lot of uh, cool backstory and history behind it. Uh, this park is based off of Belmont Park in San Diego, California, uh, especially with the, the main coaster here as well. And uh, Fred's written a whole backstory behind uh, this park and kind of the expansion of everything over the years. And it really gives a lot of, um, you know, credence to how everything has been built in the space and in the park. And it, it works out really well and it's just kind of fun to read and then fun to see all those details here in the park itself. Uh, so let's dive right in. Uh, this park is set on the beach side uh, within kind of a larger uh, developed area here. We have a lot of outside the park buildings and things like that. But you know, as I like to do, uh, we're going to start in the park itself. Um, so we'll just jump uh, right in the middle, actually, and start with the wooden coaster, which is the first thing here. So this park, according to lore, started in 1925. Uh, and this is a John Miller coaster. Uh, that uh, has been saved over the years and is now sort of the centerpiece of the original part of this park. Uh, so we've got a, a really nice looking ride here, a uh, compact kind of double out and back coaster, um, single train uh, with a pretty nice looking station here. Um, good little uh, sign. And I like the, uh, the flags on this and then the little light pieces and everything around it. Um, layout wise, that's uh, pretty good as well. We've got the a tunnel underneath, which is pretty typical of those early 20s and 30s type wooden coasters. Uh, we're using the Morgan trains, uh, six cars here, could have gone six or seven. Uh, either one uh, looks pretty good. And uh, we have a nice uh, sign here that uh, uses the coaster structure for, uh, for that. I think that's kind of a neat look. So this is the kind of icon um, image of the, the park itself. Um, nice looking please stay seated sign and the, the flags down uh, here. Well, like I said, this is built off or based off of uh, Giant Dipper at Belmont Park. So this one is the California Dipper, um, but uh, it's got a good little layout to it. Um, maybe a little more modern than um, 1925 stuff, but uh, on the whole, it looks pretty good. It's got a lot of little airtime hills. The flat corner up here, nice looking structure up against the uh, corner of the road. Um, then a couple of little banked turns in here. And um, then you have this uh, through the structure, sort of lower part here. Nice uh, pop up and over the walking entrance into the park. Uh, wrapping around into the final. So a good layout overall. I think it, it looks nice. I maybe would have done a second train um, and potentially considered banking this, but I kind of like that look on the flat overall. What gets me is that this is the only unbanked part, and then we have a lot of other uh, full bank parts, including this full diving first drop, which uh, is a little aggressive, but not too bad overall. So this parking lot outside is the... Uh, uh, part of the uh, parking for this space. And then we also have the beach parking here as well that leads into the park. Some great little details here, like the lights that overhang on the path and then these bollards that come across. Uh, so jumping down in, uh, I pop up on the other side here and we've got this nice little area with a couple of rides and uh, a lot of um, buildings sort of in this uh, Spanish uh, mission style uh, architecture with the Spanish tile roofs, a lot of the peach coloring, the tan and the browns, uh, very warm color palette overall, but that's uh, balanced nicely with all the greenery uh, here in the various um, planters throughout. Uh, so under the coaster on this side, we have the uh, go-kart track, which has this pretty cool gantry with the uh, starting lights on it and the uh, checkerboard overhang here with the uh, covered queue space. Uh, nice kind of little simple design, but uh, I don't think it needs to be anything more than that. I think we have our tires and the barricades protecting it on the outside. I do kind of like to see these that have their own sort of pit lane and then the, the full circuit as that's how usually uh, American go-karts are done. Um, but that also requires a heck of a lot more hacking. And I think on the whole, this is all right. I'm hoping to see it run, but uh, it looks like it is... Uh, waiting on some people so 
uh, perhaps that perhaps I've let this run for too long. Um, but let's uh, continue kind of jumping around to a few of the other spots. We got a couple little kids rides here, some two by twos, which will be nice if they work, but um, that's okay otherwise. Um, then this uh, little um, you know, the jumping jumping star uh, thing here with a nice little backdrop. Uh, on the back here. The name of that ride escapes me at the moment. Um, <clears throat> but uh, Carousel here next door with a really great uh, overhang. Uh, I like the use of the monorail track here and the uh, cycle monorail for the curve pieces and then these sort of dormer um, sides that come out with the, the nice canopy on top. Frames it really well. Also covers the, the queue line as well, but it's tall enough that you can still take a peek at that um, uh, at the ride itself. So another one of those kind of early signature rides of the park uh, that a good look. According to the lore of the park, uh, they got one of these Schwarzkopf catapult coasters. Um, there were only six of these in existence in real life, and uh, there are currently none operating now, one that's standing but not operating uh, in Oman of all places. Uh, but according to the park lore, this is the only one in the world that now still operates. So uh, good for these guys for keeping this up and running. Uh, kind of a neat, uh, unique little coaster ride type thing from Schwarzkopf. So it uh, has a cool operating cycle here where it does actually not make it the first time, rock back a little bit and then go up again. Uh, the station is on the banking, which is how it was in real life. Though a little more challenging to get in and out of perhaps, but, you know, a good look overall. Uh, and uh, definite points for it uh, being rideable by the peeps as well. On the back side here, you have another really great billboard sign with the lights over top and then the different colors and everything, the fun of the ocean tagline. Uh, this would be a great kind of photo spot because you get the loop overhead as well. So that's really, really neat. Well done there. Um, on the side here, we have a couple of different uh, buildings. We have a games area here which has, which has some of the carnival games, some skee ball. Um, right here we have a theater that uh, inside is showing a, a 3D movie, um, Riders on the Storm. Uh, so that's uh, a nice use of the actual show, uh, film that's showing, the Storm Chasers film. A lot of times, I, I know at least I do pick a film and you name it something entirely different because that fits your theme, but I like that that still matches the theme. Uh, nice detailing here on the bathrooms with the uh, sinks on the inside. Uh, that's a good uh, little look. And then I like this colored sort of rainbow pattern on the various games as well. Some more skee ball and then uh, a couple of these other games. <clears throat> the next corner here has the uh, Dodgems ride inside. I uh, really like the arcade of arches on either end. So you can still see inside, but it's uh, fully enclosed in a building, which a lot of these typically are. Um, and then some uh, other little strips here. Pretty generous uh, back of house space, but you know that's not atypical um, in an area here where you know space is usually at a premium. It, it is seems it does seem like a lot of space, but um, I think it's it's kind of framed nicely as a block. And then same thing over here as well. Um, and finishing out this block, we've got a number of, of shops. I really like the. Uh, the purchasable items here, all the, the gift shop items out here on the path. It makes it look a little more lively, makes it look um, like it's being used and, and gives some kind of life to the, the path overall. Um, also appreciate the pathways that go into the buildings, like through the glass doors. So it looks like they're using the proper doors and getting in and out. Um, here, Fred's uh, made himself a chef and he's got a pretty nice restaurant here on the beach, uh, largest building in this well, canopy here, but I like the look of it with the, the glass and nice kind of ocean view uh, throughout. We'll pop over to the other side here where we have another little gift shop and uh, another uh, restaurant, I'm assuming, the Pink Crab. Uh, and then anchoring this is our uh, haunted mansion, the Ghost Castle. A little bit small overall. I'd almost like to see it a little bit deeper into that empty space back here. And um, almost would like to see some show scenes as well. But I really like this facade. A uh, good use of the uh, stock game uh, skeleton as well. And then I kind of like the bars on the side here and then the castle elements on either side. Uh, so it looks good. Uh, nice use of those objects.
Inside here, before we move along, we have the observation tower that's uh, just up inside the coaster itself. This is reminiscent of uh, Gold Striker, California's Great uh, America, that has the observation tower inside its first curving drop, just like this. So neat look, neat positioning for that, that thing, and nice American flag detail there on top. Here we have a um, Frisbee ride. Um, looks like one of the, the KMG uh, models that... Um, doesn't work, of course. Um, unfortunately, we don't have this type of ride in the game, but uh, he's done a nice thing here where there's an invisible ride sitting on top of it, so people still look like they're using it and queue for it, which is about the next best thing. Uh, good use, too, here of the uh, little uh, food stalls and, and just stands throughout. Again, gives some livelihood to the path and just makes it look a little more... Um, uh, just more used... Um, same with the, the variations on the path here, the little brick accents, uh, especially down this area where they have the, the striping and then the um, kind of octagon patterns throughout uh, that frame all these trees. Um, so just up on this other side here, we've got all of our uh, games areas and um, a couple of different you know, parts and pieces. Uh, we've got this really nice uh, house on the back here. Um, blah, blah, blah. Can't actually see the sign. The sign says "Escapist," so it looks like an escape room uh, that fits here. It's a shame you couldn't see the sign, but uh, this is a really neat structure. Nice building. I like these columns on the front, the balcony on here, and then the, the uh, balcony on the sides as well. Um, here we have another uh, nice archway entrance. So you're kind of defining each of those uh, entrances. So this is, has an archway. This has this great sign on it. And then, you know, coming in from the parking lot is a little more simple. But I, I like this off of the, the main path here, especially coming from some of the parking lots on this side. Here we have a, uh, a fun little coaster, the Fiesta Express. This is a Zamperla uh, Mini Wild Mouse Ride. Uh, there's a couple of these. Uh, this is a mirror image version of the real thing, so a little bit different than I would have expected. Um, the real thing has a fair number of uh, hairpins on it, and it uh, looks like we've nearly or fully matched all of that. I think from an RCT scale standpoint, I might have considered pulling out one or two of those switchbacks just to squeeze it up a little bit, but I can't argue with the backdrop. That's nice looking. Again, good use of the lights, the flags, all the, the decor throughout, so that looks pretty good. Now, on a lot of these things, I would typically go ahead and hack out the um, station platform and then do a custom one. I just think it looks better overall, but um, nothing wrong with the old, uh, old standard reliable style there. Continuing along, we have more buildings here. Um, a lot of these buildings, again, are pretty narrow. I'd almost take some of this backspace and expand it out just a little bit to give it some more room. But, um, I mean, even if it's just a flat box building rather than having your warehouse building in, in the center here, I almost think that kind of sticks out a little bit compared to just expanding the backside here and then making this attached to one of the buildings. But a lot of great detailing on here, some of these uh, ductings and the AC units and uh, the... Uh, emergency egress stairs here from the, the dark ride, which I think is a cool detail that I'm not sure I've seen very often. Uh, but great detailing overall, nice structure on the backside of the sign here for the Fiesta Express. Uh, and then up here, I really like this club, just super gaudy, the disco lounge. Um, lots of colors here with the glass and everything. I just think it's a cool, cool look. It's bright, it's in your face. Um, it would be neat if there was a little shop or stall or something up here to get some people to go up those uh, stairs. It looks like they can go up the, the uh, pathway itself, but not up to the top here. So it would be neat if there was a way to activate that just a little bit, make it feel like the club is actually you know, hopping. So we uh, get to the point in the storyline where the park um, expanded by buying another plot of land over here. I think the readme said that uh, it was on an old blockbuster um, uh, shop that was here, which is a funny, nice detail. Um, so we're going to skip across this uh, parking lot, which could also be uh, the beach parking lot. I like the little uh, park here with the you know, dirt pathway all the way up to the, the beach itself and then the uh, first aid and, and restrooms building here. It kind of feels like one of those uh, little beach uh, administration type buildings uh, that you might see. Again, nice detailing here with the, the lights across everything. 
So this is the more modern uh, park layout. So you can kind of tell it's planned a little more nicely, I, I think, or it feels a little more fully planned out compared to the other area, fitting nicely into this rectangle here. A couple of big coasters, but we'll start with the big one. Uh, this is a Gerslauer Eurofighter called Calvanga. So Fred noted in his uh, readme that this was meant to uh, be something like hang time and not berry farm, but he wanted something a little more transportable looking uh, or, or fairground esque looking, I suppose. Uh, so this is a custom model, but it's kind of based off of the uh, 320 plus uh, model. We've got the hang uh, element there, which this one doesn't have, or the model this is based off of doesn't have, but it's a good merge of the other ones. I like that outward banked corner uh, over top of the entrance here off of the beach. Uh, nice little roll here, uh, and then wrapping around to the final helix and the mid-course brakes uh, to keep this thing up and moving. Uh, good detail here. you got the transfer track uh, with the uh, triangular awnings over top and the, the slide piece here. Again, would have made the uh, station um, invisible just to help the look of that overall. Um, interesting that you've gone for the, the fixed park model with the actual footers and everything and not kind of a space frame for something that could be moved at some other point. I think that might have added a little bit of character here, but you know, at the same time, the park may have decided that uh, this is a permanent park. I was As I was looking at this park, it kind of reminds me of Oa Park in uh, Alabama that just recently opened a year or two ago um, that has kind of a nice overall look like this, and it is all permanent fixed rides like this. So, uh, you know, I could see it either way, but. Great looking layout, nice and compact, good support work here as well. Uh, maybe a little chunky on the lift hill, but not too bad. Um, appropriate loop, the Schwarzkopf looking loop for this. It feels like um, the kind that Gerslauer did uh, or does. And then I also like the signage here on the, um, uh, on the fence with the surfboard looking theme. Um, and then the station is pretty cool with these opposing roofs and everything. Uh, really liking the splash pad in the middle. I think that's kind of a neat centerpiece uh, for the park rather than an actual building because it can be used and all the guests walking back and forth through it. So it's a cool kids kids ride there. Uh, here we've got the uh, top spin, another great backdrop with the flags and the lights and everything and also the water and the rock work in the front. I think that's kind of a good look overall. Uh, the in-game topspin is awfully small compared to the real thing, but there are real small models in, in real life, I suppose, that could fit that as well. Uh, I like this little building here that advertises tokens and wristbands, so it's a good uh, note towards the seaside parks, which operate like that, where you can either get the all-day wristband or not. Um, we got a couple of, of similar rides here. We've got the, the Big Air, which is a Vacoma ride, of which only one was sold. Uh, and then we have the Zamperluck Disco Coaster, which uh, many, many more have been sold. And it's a very popular stock model uh, using Space K's new-ish uh, ride vehicle, which looks really great. Uh, but let's start over here with the Vacoma. Like I said, only one of these was built, and it still operates. Uh, but um, it is... Uh, it's an awfully big ride, so this is sort of a smaller model uh, of that. This is using the Mauer vehicles, but they look pretty close to what the Vacoma vehicles were. Now, the real one goes up and has a brake on the top, and then the entire vehicle stops and turns, so it's facing downwards, and then it drops, rolls back and forth, and then it grabs again, and then does the same thing. Now, they did disable that feature uh, on the real one several years ago, and it sounds like it does not do it anymore, but um, it is kind of a neat feature. Not something you can do in RCT, though, so I think we'll take it as this. I really like this lift structure. Um, to me, this one actually feels a little um, more proportional than maybe the Eurofighter one. I like this one the best. Uh, it's a good look. And I also really like this um, this structure here with the sort of odd shape of the of the roof. Uh, clever ice cream name station here, or ice cream shop with the Ice Ice Baby and the little ice cream uh, cone on the side. We have our standard scrambler here called the Tornado. Another swinging ship here, Ocean Motion. Um, and then now it leads us over to the uh, Disco Coaster. So pretty good look on this one. I think this is maybe one of the better ones that I've seen because it is properly matching the 
the layouts are the real thing. They're pretty symmetrical across the whole thing. It has the stop on either end and does that typical motion throughout. Um, good look and a cool entrance underneath of the, the hump on the ride. I think that's nice that it was actually used. Uh, maybe a little bit of an odd choice to pick both this guy and this guy in the same park since there's sort of a similar motion also with the swinging ship here right next to it all. But, um, you know, there, it's, it's cool because I really haven't seen ever or I think probably ever. I don't think I've seen a Vekoma uh, Big Air. So that was that was a well done choice and kind of an interesting, unique option. Uh, here we have a double SNS tower uh, called Max Air. We have one that's the drop and one that's the launch, uh, which is pretty typical of the, the double options where there's one that does one and one that does another. I was going to say if these had the same operational mode that it didn't really make sense for a seaside park to have a big double one like this, just usually based on the amount of guests that these places have uh, all at once. But the fact that they operate separately is, is a good touch and I think works really well. Over here, uh, unfortunately, a non-operational ride. Really wish you could have gotten this one operational too. But this is a, a Zero Jet Skis. Uh, great, unique ride that uh, is popping up a lot in uh, Europe especially. And a number of the American parks have them. But uh, kind of a neat ride that swings out. And you can control how the, the vehicle swings in and out. This is a custom ride that Rumi had made a, a couple of years ago for head-to-head. Uh, -head. And it uh, looks great. I like this boardwalk, the frames around it. Um, the water goes up underneath. That's a really nice touch. And then also these water um, guns that are right along the main promenade. So I'm sure they're going to get used pretty heavily. Uh, nice detailing here with the uh, little strand uh, lights or lanterns or things between the trees rather than the posts. I think that's a, a cool touch because usually we kind of go from either post to post or building to building. But that's a good, a good look overall. On uh, this side here, we've got some more games and uh, another restroom, and then we have the Surf Shack shop outside. I think the one thing that I would like to have seen within this uh, park is a big arcade building, like an indoor arcade with a lot of the, the coin-operated type arcade game machines. That's usually how a lot of these parks go, and one of the big draws for them, because it's an in-and-out, it's easy money. Um, You've got a lot of the shops that are the, the carnival type games that you walk up to, but it would have been really neat to have, you know, a larger building, even something like this that has an interior that you finished out with some arcade games and things like that. I think it could be a nice detail. So let's jump out to the beach now, uh, since we spend enough time in the park. Um, there's a lot of nice little detailing on the beach itself. Uh, this boardwalk that goes all the way out down to the water. Um and then uh, a number of these kind of surf shack buildings. So here's the, the parasailing club uh, building here. And the uh, a lot of these little um, kind of shack type buildings. Here's the surf shack that's got a, uh, uh, again, nice little surf details here. That would have been cool to freeze a peep in there as an operator. Um, but out here we actually have the uh, peeps that are surfing. I think this is a super cool detail, really, really good look. Uh, overall and then above here we have the parasailing using Rumi's ride as well uh, cool look overall and then in the water I mean we have the schools of fish down here we have some rocks and some uh, looks like some seaweed and some other things in here uh, that really give this some life I like the depth in here I like that you added the uh, white water pieces for the waves uh, to good look and then also just the the boats in general um, there would have been cool to get some peeps in those as well, but uh, maybe they're just not riding at the moment. So here, everybody is queued up for swimming in the ocean. Uh, so this is another great looking ride and a good good detail here for uh, having all the peeps in there. I think what I might have considered on this is doing this as seven or eight different rides without the queue line itself. Then you don't have the queue here, which kind of feels maybe a little bit weird. Uh, and then you just kind of spread it all around and then you don't have a queue. You just have the guests that are at the entrance and can pop in whenever. So something to consider just to avoid having that. Uh, have a relatively light day at the beach, it looks like, with uh, some folks here lounging out on the, uh, on the towels. Uh, good look overall, especially with this lifeguard station uh, in the pretty bright blue there. Um, 
this is one of my favorite buildings on the whole map, uh, this beach bar of, of sorts. I like that it uh, is using the terrain here to its advantage as the beach slopes down to the water. So you've got this raised deck throughout and then the stairs that come down onto the beach itself. Um, I think this, this looks really nice. Um, and then lots of little detailing on the back. Um, uh oh, looks like the big air has had an accident, which is not the best, but you know, I'm sure they'll recover. Um, let's continue along. So we have some really great uh, diamond uh, detailing on the main boardwalk here as well. Going for a concrete boardwalk rather than a wood, which is uh, typical California. That's kind of what I expected to see with that. Uh, got a lot of peep jams here, which I'm not quite sure what's up with those. But um, another good detail is the bike riders here. So biking along the, the trail. Uh, it's a clever detail. I'm going to uh, jump back here because I missed this as I was looking at the, all the boats. We've got the um, skate park, which is super, super cool. Really clever detail. Really good use of, of trying to do curves in the game where there really aren't uh, a lot of options for that. So we have some great here ramps uh, in this bowl. Uh, nice curve space throughout here. Half pipe on this side and a couple of rail features uh, as well. I think this is a super neat... Um, Great detail that I hadn't seen anybody attempt one of these before. So that, that looks really great. Jumping back over to this side, um, same comment applies to the beach goers over here for the swimming. Um, another really, really great use of uh, some invisible rides here with the uh, uh, the football player uh, ride that was made by Rumi for head to head, uh, using that for the basketball players. Uh, neat, uh, neat uh, thing there. Pickup game has, you know, a little more than your standard 10, but not too bad. Uh, good look with the sand here, or with the uh, stands here as well, um, and the kind of netting that sits around them. So really great look overall. Uh, funny detail here with the uh, police chasing the uh, stolen car. If I can ever open one of these, there it is. The uh, Popo chasing stolen police car. Uh, and then also this great uh, water feature here with the bridge over top and kind of a nice photo spot for that entrance. What I would have done, though, is slid that over maybe four tiles so then you can see it all the way down this vista. You're kind of hiding it behind the building here, so it's a little bit of a shame because it's a really beautiful uh, crafted landscape area, and it would have been great to be able to, uh, uh, to frame that a little bit nicer. So now we have another uh, section of um, beach buildings on the side here. We've got the, uh, the sports bar, uh, double height here as well. I like this open truss look. Um, and the, all the folks inside here kind of milling around. This is a clever uh, facade with the American flag on here. Um, and then we have the Pacific gift shop on this side. Liquor store, a staple on the beach, of course. And then this uh, supermarket on the corner as well that also has the uh, entrance and exit so everybody's walking through the doors which is a nice touch as well uh, out here on the main drag we've got the starbucks drive-in got the uh, drive through here as we go around the side so the uh, different signage and then the pickup window and everything i like the little order um, order sign there uh, well done on the uh, traffic lights i think these are pretty minimalistic sometimes these have a tendency to get kind of chunky so this looks nice overall and then uh, good use on the crosswalk uh, all the the um, striping layouts there and everything and then the variety of vehicles so it's it's trucks and the cars not just just one or the other and they're all sorts of different colors as well <clears throat> here we have bonita cove park uh, which is a great use of open space and then the trails again i think that looks really nice uh, overall uh, continuing to move down, we have TGI Fridays, which I know Fred is a fan of, but um, I can't say the same. Uh, but the look of the overall thing is great. you got the perfect sign here with the red and white checkers. Uh, pretty big building overall. Uh, nice overhangs uh, and everything throughout there, but um, good look uh, throughout. Kind of got the backspace here as well. Next door to it, we have a CVS Pharmacy. This is a monster CVS here. Um, but it's a good look um, and nice detailing as well. Same with the brick and the white and the black. It kind of all plays off of each other uh, throughout. Del Taco, a staple in California. Uh, one of the things that I missed, though, is an In-N-Out burger. I didn't see one of those throughout, so 
that was a, a little bit of a surprise, but I like Del Taco better than um, In and Out, to be honest. So great look here, um, good coloration, and you got the logo here just right, and um, the overall color scheme. Really liking these, especially these kind of look like your sort of traditional could be anywhere beach condos, um, sort of modern look to them with the balconies and the overhangs and everything. But um, this feels like it could be in Miami, it could be in Daytona, it could be in Los Angeles, could be in San Diego. But that's that's kind of the point of these is sort of generic beach architecture. Um, but I, I really like those overall. I think that's a good look. Um, and it's... Uh, Another quality uh, quality architecture for sure. Um, roof garden here is kind of neat with these uh, sunbathers up top here as well. And then over here we have uh, SE Tech, the college campus. Um, cool structures here. I like the skylight on here. I like the darker blue skylight on this side. Um, not Oh, I'm sorry. Those are not skylights. Those look like solar panels on that side, uh, which is a cool detail. And... Uh, then the skylight on this side would have been neat to get a little bit of detailing inside if you could just to kind of show some classrooms or some I don't know what that might be necessarily or even have some uh, characters walking around in here handyman or something just to give it some life uh, within that space uh, but nice little parking lot as well good look overall I like all the crosswalk signage here I think that's a good touch um, and just the the overall detailing it's very clean it's very well put together um, and uh, there's there's a lot of good good details in here overall so i think that wraps us up for everything here we've looked at the kind of two sections of the park i know in the the readme file it says that they are looking to buy another section but there's some opposition from the public so let's hope that they can buy it and then we can maybe see an update to this park I think I would like to see that very much. But before we go, I don't want to miss the boat out here. This is one thing that I did miss when I was going through the first time. Uh, really well done on this um, kind of monster-sized yacht. But uh, some sunbathers up top here. But a good look, neat custom boat, and a nice design overall. Uh, same with the parasail, uh, or the water skiers option, I guess. Um, that's a nice little detail as well. I just like that there's so much livelihood here in the in the water. So there's something to look at, you know, in the water, on the beach, uh, in the park, and then even on the roadway here with the with the cars moving. So, you know, on the whole, a great park, uh, certainly deserving of its gold. And uh, it makes me want to see some more of this or see this park expanded or uh, kind of another um, future uh, expansion for for the space. So well done to Fred and uh, well done to this park. Uh, until next time, uh, thank you guys for watching. If you have any requests, please send them to Cedar Point 6 at New Element uh, or uh, drop a comment in the uh, YouTube channel. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.